Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the lectures on engineering mathematics 1 and this is lecture number 23. We are talking about the integral calculus uh, in particular improper integrals. So, we will continue uh, the discussion on the convergence of type 1 integrals. Now, we have one more test which uh, was not discussed in the previous lecture that is called the Dirichlet test and this is again a very important test for testing the convergence of improper integrals of type 1. So, here we suppose that this f and g these are the two functions defined from this a to infinity and they are taking the real value and they are such that that f is integrable on each interval. So, a, b and b can take any value greater than a. So, this f is an integrable on each integral a to b and the other one the integral a to b this f x this is the second condition uh, these integrals are uniformly bounded. So, integrals means that this b can take any value. So, we are not restricting on b. So, these integrals here are uniformly bounded. So, what does that mean that there exist a, a number c here the constant c greater than 0 such that the value of this integral the absolute value of this integral a to b f x d x is less than equal to that constant and for all b greater than a naturally b is some finite number we are talking about. So, here for any value b here which is greater than a if this integral is bounded by a constant c it is the c is not depending on the number b here. So, in that case we call that this is uniformly bounded. So, this bound is independent of this b then we call that this integral is uniformly these integrals are uniformly bounded. So, these are the two conditions on f, f is integrable and uh, this is uniform these are these integrals are uniformly bounded and the function g is monotone and bounded. So, again the g is either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing and the bounded. So, the values of this functions are also finite the bounded and then we have this limit as x approaches to infinity this g x is 0. So, this is a g is a monotonic function which is approaching to uh, 0 as x approaching to infinity. So, that is uh, another condition and in that case this improper integral a to infinity f x uh, g x d x. So, we have now the product here in the integrand f x g x and this converges that is the result. So, we will not go through the proof uh, of this result. So, what is important here? The important is to check that these integrals here they are uniformly bounded. So, meaning we have to compute this integral and see whether we can bound that integral by some constant c which is independent of this number b here for any finite number b. If we can uh, do that, so we have this condition uniformly boundedness and the second one then g is monotone and so monotonically it is going to 0 as x approaching to infinity. So, in that case so these are the two main conditions here under those conditions we have that this integral the product here converges. So, this is a very useful integral because if we know that one of them so for example, g is here this bounded and um, uh, monotone going to 0 here and then these integral over f uh, converges. So, then we can conclude about this product as well that uh, what will happen to, to this integral and it will converge if these conditions are satisfied. So, here let us go through this example where we can use this uh, result easily to prove uh, such integrals uh, 1 to infinity sin x over x power p. Uh, is convergent for p greater than equal to 0. So, for any p here greater than 0 uh, this integral 1 to infinity sin x over x power p is convergent we will show with the help of uh, uh, this uh, Dirichlet uh, uh, test. 
So, in this case we let that f x is equal to uh, sin x. So, we have this function here f x as sin x and the other one g x we will take 1 over x power p. So, how this is useful now because we know uh, about this uh, g that this is monotonically decreasing to 0 as x approaches to infinity for uh, this p positive and this integral the sin x which we can easily uh, show that 1 to be this sin x d x. So, this integral will be the minus this uh, cos x and then we have this limit a to b. So, which will be uh, this cos uh, 1 minus uh, the cos b this integral value and then the absolute value of, of, of this we have to consider. So, this cos is bounded by 1 always and we can use this inequality here that this is less than uh, cos 1 plus uh, cos b and in that case this will be bounded by 2. So, we can easily show that this integral here is uh, is bounded by uh, by 2 for any value of b we take uh, which is greater than 1 less than infinity. So, what we have seen that there is a uniform bound here. So, whatever values of b we take the value of this integral will be bounded by 2 and this is what we we want for uniform boundedness of this integral now. The other function g which is uh, a monotonically decreasing function and uh, naturally this tends to 0 as x tends to infinity for any value of p positive. So, using that uh, Dirichlet test now, so we can talk about this product the integral of this product sin x and uh, product with 1 over x power p that means this integral sin x over x power p dx from 1 to infinity this converges for uh, any value of p uh, greater than 0. So, this Dirichlet test is very useful now uh, that we have just considered uh, as a ratio of the two function again. So, one was f x and another was g x and this function f x had this nice property about this uniform integrability and the second one was monotonically decreasing to 0 therefore, we could conclude with the the rich uh, test that this converges. Another of similar kind we can test the convergence of this uh, 0 to infinity sin x over x uh, e power minus x this integral here. So, for any value of this a uh, positive. So, what we will do we can uh, prove this again easily. So, this is e power uh, minus x cos x wait. So, this was the first problem e power uh, so sin x over x e power minus x. So, we have already done before that was sin x over x power p when 1 to infinity and now we will do with sin x over x multiplied by e power minus x. So, in this case we will again this uh, use the idea that we can break this easily 0 to 1 and then we have sin x over x e power minus x d x plus this uh, 1 to infinity and we have uh, sin x over this x and e power minus x d x this function. So, the first integral is a proper integral can proper integral the reason is clear because this sin x over x uh, has the value 1 as x approaches to infinity and this is 1. So, the limit here of the integrand exists when x approaches to 0 and at all other point there is no, no singularities, there is no unboundedness. So, this is a proper integral the first one. The second one now because of this x infinity we have to test that what type of result we get from here. So, now we take uh, this integral here a to b. So, note that the integral 1 and then above 1 we can take this b is uh, sin x over x dx. So, if we take this integral here sin x over x dx a 1 this x is going from 1 to any number this b. So, here the x we can replace because this is the minimum value if we replace this one. So, the, the integral will be the larger one. So, we have 1 to b and this x is replaced by 1 the lowest possible value. So, that the integrand is, is the larger one. So, we have this integral bigger than this one 
uh, as sin x dx. And this we know now that we can uh, integrate this with minus cos x and then 1 to b. So, this value will be uh, cos 1 and minus the cos b and we can take that absolute value there. So, this absolute value of these functions will be uh, again the absolute value here which is bounded by 2. So, we can prove that that this integral here sin x over x the sin x over x 1 to b for any value of uh, b greater than 1 any finite value this is uniformly bounded and this value is 2. So, this is uniformly this integral is uniformly bounded by 2 and this exponential minus x function. So, exponential minus x function is is monotone and it approaches to, to 0. If we take the limit as x approaches to infinity this e power minus x that approaches to 0. So, we have that property also satisfied. So, then we can use this Dirichlet test there because the one uh, integral with this sin x over x we have seen that that is um, monotone that is uniformly bounded and the other one here the g x which is e power minus x it is uh, it is going to 0 as uh, x approaches to infinity. So, in this case uh, we can apply now the Dirichlet uh, results Dirichlet's test which says that this integral converges. So, this integral converges and the other one is proper integral. So, we have uh, the original integral here 0 to infinity sin x over x that converges. Well, so we do one more problem here that is problem number 2. So, here we will it is a similar kind of problem we have 1 minus e power minus x cos x over x square in this case and the idea again we can break into two parts. So, I will take here uh, a to infinity and then this uh, we have 1 over x square cos x as one integral. So, we have cos x over x square dx and the other one is a to infinity and we have e power minus x and then cos x over x square dx. So, this first integral this is uh, converges absolutely this converges converges absolutely and the reason is clear because by the comparison test we can easily conclude because this cos x over over x square this is uh, uh, less than this 1 over uh, x square. Indeed, this absolutely uh, concept we will uh, we will explain again. So, here the absolutely means that the if we take even the absolute value of the integrand this is, is con this converges. So, this cos x over x square is bound is less than equal to 1 over x square because this cos x the values are bounded by 1. So, we have 1 over x square and we know this integral as a to infinity 1 over x square that converges and in that case uh, this integral will also converge because this is a dominating function 1 over x square and the whose integral converges. So, naturally that integral will converge. The second one here we can again use the same argument because again this e power minus x uh, cos x over this x square. So, this value here will be bounded by by 1 because e power this is minus x is also decreasing function. So, it will take uh, the highest value when we have then x will approach to this a. So, in any case this will uh, be also bounded by 1. So, this second integrand is also bounded by 1 over x square and by the comparison test uh, we can again conclude that this also converges absolutely. We can also use here the Dirichlet test uh, because we can take this e power minus x. So, if you want to use this Dirichlet test here we can take this function e power minus x over x square and this function approaches to, to 0 as x approaches to infinity as x approaches to infinity this, this is monotone function e power minus x is decreasing and 1 over x square is also decreasing. So, both the functions so here we have the decreasing function for whatever values of x 
and uh, this cos x the integral of this a to infinity cos x we can again show that this is bounded by 2. So, we can use that Dirichlet test like we have done in the earlier problem. So, this is similar to the problem uh, number 1. So, we can here uh, also show that this converges. So, this also converges and the given integral there 1 minus e power minus x cos x over x square dx converges. So, now just a note here that this integral of this type uh, minus infinity to please f x d x we are not uh, normally discussing here we are just discussing the integrals where uh, we have uh, infinity in place of this b. So, this a to infinity uh, type of uh, integrals we are discussing, but this also we can uh, easily deal because we can substitute for example, here x is equal to minus t and then what will happen that this integral will be just minus b to infinity. So, again we have a similar type integral which we are uh, discussing for the convergence where the in infinity appears above. So, if we have this type of integrals we can just by simple substitution we can convert into this type of integral and then discuss the convergence the way we have discussed earlier. So, this is the uh, point here we, uh, we were talking about the absolute convergence another important uh, a factor here that what is the absolute convergence. So, as I said before the absolute convergence means that this integral converges absolutely meaning that if with the absolute value over the integrand if this converges. So, if this integral converges we call that this integral converges absolutely because we have taken the positive values of, of this integrand for the range here 0 to infinity. So, if this converges then we call that this integral converges absolutely and there is a one more term which is used here that this integral converges conditionally meaning that this integral uh, converges, but it does not converge uh, absolutely. So, here meaning is that this converges, but not absolutely in that case we call usually that this integral converges conditionally. So, here like uh, coming to this example here 1 to infinity sin x over x power p d x and we can uh, show now that this integral converges absolutely for p greater than 1. For any value of p greater than 1 this integral converges absolutely. The idea is clear which uh, was also uh, mentioned uh, in the previous example a bit. So, here we have this integral if we take the absolute value of this integrand that means the sin x and x power p. So, here x are taking positive values and p is greater than uh, 1. So, here we have this sin x absolute value over x power p because this is positive. So, we do not have to use the absolute value here and this is bounded by 1 over x power p because the sin x uh, will never take value greater than 1. So, we can bound this by 1 over x power p and we know now by the comparison test that the integral 1 to infinity 1 over x power p this integral converges. So, what we have uh, shown here that uh, this integral also converges because uh, this we have uh, by the comparison test here. Yeah? So, we have taken the integrand here the, the, the sin x over x power p which was less than equal to 1 over x power p and we have uh, we know the result that this converges the integral of 1 over x power p uh, 1 to infinity this converges and therefore, by the comparison test we have shown that this converges meaning that this integral in other words converges absolutely. Yeah. So, we can uh, take instead of because at present this is taking positive negative values in the range. So, if we take indeed all the positive values in that case also this integral converges, but this is important that we have uh, shown here for p greater than 1 that this integral converges absolutely when p is greater than 1. We will see later on that when p is equal to 1 this integral does not converge uh, absolutely indeed it converges, but not absolutely. So, going to the next problem. So, this is there is a result also that uh, this is such integral converges if uh, this converges 
meaning with the absolute value because this is going to be a larger value than this value here of the integral. So, if this converges naturally this converges because here we have positive negative and many this cancellation uh, will come and uh, this value will be less than the value here with while taking the absolute value of the integrand. So, this converges if this converges, but the converse is not true meaning that uh, so, this will converge if this converges, but if this converges this may not converge. Yeah? So, if the integral converges the integral may not converge absolutely and that is a very standard example which we will discuss uh, now here that 0 to infinity this sin x over x dx this integral converges conditionally meaning that this integral converges, but when we take the absolute value here over the integrand then this integral does not converge. So, first we will show that this integral converges which is a trivial uh, task now. So, 0 to infinity sin x over dx we have written as the sum of these two integrals 0 to 1 sin x over x dx and 1 to infinity sin x over x dx and note that the first integral is uh, is a proper integral. So, naturally it converges and the second one we have this infinity this we have to to discuss. So, this is a proper integral and here we have seen in this example 1 that here even x power p and p is greater than 1. So, that integral converges. So, naturally this integral also converges sin x over x we have seen already in example 1. So, that means that this integral converges. So, the integral 0 to infinity sin x over x uh, dx converges and next we will show that when we take the absolute value over the integrand that integral does not converge. So, we have this example which says that the converse is not true because here we have the convergence of the integral, but the integral does not converge absolutely. The other way around is, is obvious because if we are taking all the positive values is still uh, we can get this integral. So, naturally when we take the um, when the function takes positive and negative values it will uh, certainly converge. So, here we will show now that this integral does not converge and this is a bit involved now. So, we take this absolute value sin x over x dx and we write down this as a sum uh, of n goes sum of over this n goes from 0 to infinity n pi and n plus 1 pi and sin x absolute value over x dx. So, here this integral is uh, is exactly this integral. So, we have broken here like n is equal to 0. So, we are going from 0 to pi and then this integrand and the value then we are going from n is equal to 1. So, that means pi to 2 pi and this integrand and so on. So, we have uh, taken the 0 to pi, pi to 2 pi and then 2 pi to 3 pi uh, and so on. So, this integral uh, 0 to infinity we have uh, broken into several uh, this is small uh, segments over the range. So, 0 to pi, pi to 2 pi, 2 pi to 3 pi and so on which we have written in this summation form. So, this is the integral and now we will make a substitution here that x is equal to n pi plus y. So, we make this substitution x is equal to n pi plus y in this integral. So, by substituting this so dx will become this dy and then this uh, n pi will be replaced uh, accordingly and n plus 1 pi as well. So, when we substitute this in this integral so, when the x was taking n pi values the y will take 0 value. So, again to see here because this relation was x is equal to n pi plus 1. So, the x was taking the lower value as n pi. So, n pi plus y. So, this y will take as the value 0. So, this goes from 0 now and when x was taking the value n pi plus this pi. So, in that case we have this n pi plus y. So, the y will take the value pi. So, our integral is now 0 to pi and this absolute value sin uh, and this x is n pi plus y. So, we have n pi plus y and here also we have substituted for x that is n pi plus y. So, we will make another uh, 
use of this inequality a of this equality that sin, sin n pi plus y sin n pi plus y is equal to minus 1 power n and sin y because for example n is 1 so we have sin pi plus y which is minus sin y and similarly for other n. So, we have this uh, equality the technometric equality which we will use here now in this uh, numerator because we have sin n pi plus y. So, while using this we have now in the numerator uh, minus 1 power n and then we have this sin y over n pi y dy the same integral which was here. So, this sin n pi plus y is replaced by minus 1 power n uh, sin y. So, now this summation as it is we have 0 to pi and this minus 1 power uh, n because we are talking about the absolute value. So, that will be uh, as it is and the sin y again. So, here we should note that we have we are not using now the absolute value because this sin y is uh, will take positive values from 0 to pi it takes value 0 there and then uh, at pi by 2 1 and then it gradually goes to 0. So, this uh, never takes va negative values in 0 to pi therefore, we have removed this absolute value here. So, divided by n pi plus y and dy. So, in this case now this denominator if we take a look here. So, y in this case for this integral is taking 0 value at to the pi value. So, if we want to make this integral larger then some other integral here. So, we can replace this y by the larger value or this denominator will be the taking the largest value here at uh, pi here. So, we have n pi plus pi. So, this y is replaced by this pi. So, that this is this integral here becomes a smaller integral for this integral and therefore, we have this inequality that this integral is larger because this is taking now the integrand is taking lower value. So, because this denominator was replaced by the lowest value uh, the highest value here which is uh, uh, pi there. So, n pi plus pi. So, this is a smaller integral and now here this is nothing but because there is no y here. So, we can take this out. So, we have n uh, sorry this pi we can take out. So, we have pi there and the integral also we can uh, evaluate. So, we have this summation n goes 0 to infinity and 1 over n uh, uh, will remain as it is. So, we have also this pi here. So, 1 over pi and this n plus 1. So, 1 over pi and n plus 1 or again let me write down. So, we have this summation n goes from 0 to infinity and this is 1 over uh, pi and n plus 1 and integral 0 to pi and we have this sin y dy. So, this will be minus cos y and then 0 to pi. So, when we substitute pi we will have again minus uh, 1 there. So, minus minus will be plus and then uh, minus minus will be plus again. So, so, 1. So, we have the value 2 here. So, this is replaced by 2. So, we have the value 2 over pi and the summation over uh, 1 over n plus 1. So, this integral is equal to this one and this is a well known series here which is a divergent series. So, that means the sum is infinity here. So, what we have seen that this integral which we have started with the absolute value this is greater than this uh, sum of the series which is infinity. So, that means this uh, integral is a divergent integral because the value of this integral will be larger than the value of this sum which is coming already to infinity. So, in that case uh, we have that this improper integral the given integral this diverges. So, the conclusion we have the Dirichlet test which says that if we can show this uniform uh, boundedness of this integral for all b greater than 1 and g is a monotone decreasing to 0 as x approaches to infinity, then we have this product in the integrand a to infinity this dx converges. And we have also discussed about the absolute convergence there and uh, 
we have seen this nice example which does not converge absolutely but it converges uh, if we don't take this absolute value for the integrand. So, these are the references used for preparing these lectures and thank you very much.